about 1500 hours just to get started 30 35 hours a week for about four thousand dollars grinding working till 9 10 o'clock at night my name is ryan nestor my business name is fab lab llc how i got started was kind of i was a mechanic for about 15 years and i did enjoy that to an extent, but I found welding and fabrication a lot more fun. Um, I was way, way more passionate about that. So I kind of fell into gathering equipment and just, uh, you know, looking for work in that realm. So about a year ago, I went full on by myself, self-employed, just going towards my passion and towards my dream of doing just fabrication full-time. What were some of the things that you needed to get to start your business? I would say in this industry, a lot of it is equipment is really expensive. So it's really hard to start out with something that's going to give you a good quality product in the end. When you're starting out, you know, most people don't have a ton of money to throw at it. So just slowly building up, you know, better equipment and um, doing the best work you can do with what you have. That's the hardest thing is equipment. And I guess work finding the work, right? There's a lot of companies out there doing what I do and they do it on a way bigger scale. So trying to tap into that market can be a little bit tough. Just getting your name out there, advertising, that seems to be working pretty well. What was like the first project that you worked on for another customer? I wouldn't say the biggest. The most crucial one that I did recently was a kayak rack for inside a trailer. It was all aluminum, so that's just kind of a, tedious process to weld all that it takes a long time so just designing that to meet the customer's expectations and to make sure it was going to hold up and last what are some investments that you had to make to get started investments to get started i mean like just a generic welder to do steel welding for instance if you're only going to do steel you know, that welder is going to cost you about $1,500 just to get started. There is cheaper versions out there and technology has helped a lot of people get into the market because the cheaper technology is getting better. So um, I would say, you know, your first initial investment, you're going to spend a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars on a wel good quality welder to take on these projects. What are some of your like day to days look like or week to weeks? It really depends on the week, obviously, the workload. Um, but, you know, a lot of it is scheduling out, you know, your days so you have enough time because it's very easy to run yourself out of time in a day because you got to plan for the time to go to the hardware store to get materials, um, go to the steel yard to get sheets of steel. And then, you know, if you get rolling and you run out of gas for your welder, well, now you got to go to the welding shop to get some gas. So I'd say day to day, it's a lot of trying to plan in the morning what your day looks like and then trying to navigate that. And if it doesn't go exactly by plan, that's okay. And that's been tough for me on my own to navigate a little bit is the day-to-day -day changes. I mean, you know, you have a plan for the morning, but that doesn't mean what it's gonna look like at the end of the day. So just trying to roll with the punches as they come. On average, I'm probably like working, yeah, 30, 35 hours a week. My kids are a little bit older and they're really busy. They have a busy lifestyle. So me jumping into the self-employed, I've given myself a little bit of opportunity there to take on these bigger projects that pay better, but then give me the flexibility to make my schedule how I need it to be. Working that 50, 55 hour a week, um, just to get that overtime, you know, just to make it, there's easier ways to do it. And if you get your name out there and you do good quality work, you will easily replace your income and then add to it. You know, within a few years, you should be making considerably more than you were as a W-2 employee. And what are some of the projects that you're working on? Are they custom projects? Are they like fixing things? Uh, what does that look like? The custom world, I'm, I'm still trying to tap into a little bit and that's why the CNC plasma table should kind of help with that. That kind of opens up my capabilities to a lot more of, you know, signs for companies, logos, you know, custom signs they want for in their house or for a wedding or whatever that may be. It kind of goes in spurts. So right now it's been a little more custom stuff, but I do get into where I work with a few landscapers and stuff and they 
have their trailers and their dump trailers and you know they they use them things every day and they're rough on them so they'll break welds and they'll have to get it repaired so those kind of are kind of a really quick they need it right now job so those kind of you just take them in as you get them and try to work through them but i would say it's a 50 50 for me right now with custom projects and repairing other things what are you doing for your advertising are you doing any paid advertising is it social media word of mouth word of mouth almost everybody i talk to i try to give a business card to business cards are cheap and they might throw them away they might lose them you don't know but it's worth a shot putting my logos on my vehicles has helped a little bit and then social media has been the biggest one for me i make facebook ads pay for those those do okay you can kind of spend a lot of money and not really get a lot out of it though so you got to be careful but social media and that's that's usually the best in the area i think and then what are some of the expenses that come with this business outside of the equipment so one thing to keep in mind when you're looking into starting a business of this nature of repairing things is you need to have good liability insurance you need to have a little bit of capital set aside for those unexpected things and a good place to do the work in. What I see a lot is people start a business and they don't plan for insurance. They don't plan for their workman's comp. They don't plan for health insurance. You know, when you go self-employed, when you go out on your own, that is all you. You have to take care of all of that. And um, before you know it, you have $1,000 a month in just money going out for health insurance, you know, business insurance. And then, you know, you wanna advertise and you wanna do shirts and hats and that all costs money and that money's got to come from somewhere. So make sure that you do your research in the market to make sure you're charging enough. When you're fixing someone else's equipment, are they bringing that to you or are you going to them? How, what does that look like? So it depends on the piece of equipment. Um, sometimes it's not great for them to move that equipment or maybe they just don't have time. So ideally I'd like to do the equipment, you know, any repair or any building here um, because everything's right here all my tools, all my welders, and um, a chain fall lift if I gotta lift heavy stuff. But I am able to go out in the world and do things there too. So there is definitely a market in the mobile welding and the mobile area, but just keep in mind, you have to have different equipment for that. You're out in the elements, you know, they're gonna call you when it's two foot of snow on the ground to come weld something. And just keep that in mind, like is, is that the work you wanna do or do you wanna be in a building dry, warm, working. So just, you know, keep in mind what you want to do and, and where you want to go with it. Have that goal and have that thing just kind of set out to go towards. What is one of like the longest projects that you've worked on? How long did that take? And what's one of like the quickest projects? I'd say the longest project would be, I did a lot of work for another company. So I would, I kind of would sublet for them. So I'd say my longest project is about a week long project of building a truck for them with a flatbed and toolboxes and a lift gate and a crane. So building a service truck has probably been my longest project uh, start to finish. You know, you just start with a bare truck with no bed on it. You install the bed, you install the crane, you have to wire all that with strobes and stuff like that. So that is another thing I kind of venture into is building service trucks as well. For like a CNC cut, that's like a minute long. That's yeah. probably one of your quicker ends. Yeah, it can be. Um, the design with CNC is where you really spend your time. One thing you got to think about when you're cutting stuff, you know, if you're cutting a letter out, if you're cutting an A out, let's say the center of that A, if you don't bridge it across, if you don't connect it to the other, that center is gonna fall out and then you're just gonna have kind of a big blob. The design, taking your time doing the design is where the CNC stuff takes your time. As you do it more, you're gonna get more proficient at it, but you gotta make sure that you really look at that design and you really spend time with it because if you put a sheet of steel on here and it's, you know, you spend $350 on a sheet of steel and you mess it up, well, the customer's not gonna pay you for that. So, I mean, you've, you've got to make sure you do it right. So, but you know, once you have it loaded and once you have it in there, then it's, yeah, it's 
you know, a minute, two minute cut and you're done. And then how much does something like that sign right there cost? Something like this would probably sell probably for $25 in raw steel form. And if you wanted to paint it, I mean, probably add about 10, $15. So, I mean, 30, $35 is probably a normal price for something like that. And are you shipping those out or are they is it local customers? So right now it's been local customers. I'd like to say, I'd like to get into the, you know, shipping out and doing stuff. A lot of people that have these do a lot of work on Etsy and stuff like that. And, you know, those guys are shipping multiple orders out every day. You know, it's it's tough for me because I have a lot of different customers. It's tough for me to find time to get to the post office and to get it shipped out. And that's for me, time is is everything right now. So going forward, what are your future plans? How do you plan to grow? What does that look like? So basically in the first year of business, I've taken everything I've made and just really dove it right back into equipment and upgrading my equipment and buying other stuff. That way it sets me up for my next growth would be in a bigger building that I could you know, have multiple projects going on at a time and hopefully have another employee helping get some of the projects knocked out. You have to have the equipment to really start. So this here's a TIG welder. The main advantage of this is just control on thin, or thin material. You have a lot more control. You can do a lot thinner material, a lot tighter spaces, and a lot stronger of a weld. This takes a little bit to get used to. It's not, it, you know, MIG welding and TIG welding are a very different process. So MIG welding, you're, you know, the wire is coming out of the MIG welder and that's what's actually your filler material is this wire coming out of here that's a big spool in the machine. Uh, a TIG welder, this is what's creating the arc, but you're feeding in the material. You're feeding in a filler rod. So it takes a little more practice because you got to feed it in at the right time. You got to really pay attention to the puddle and when the material gets soft to really add the, the filler rod. So I would say this is a lot harder to learn, but take your time and learn it it will pay off in the end if you know how to take weld. And how much does something like this cost? This one comes from Lincoln. Uh, they were running a deal on them for a little bit. I don't think they're doing that now, but I think this one runs about 2,200. Now that being said, you have to have 100% argon for it. So that tank will cost you about three or $400. Um, and of course you've got to have a welding helmet to protect yourself. So I would say all in to start out TIG welding in this form, uh, in a Lincoln, you're going to probably be about $3,000 to start up. There are a lot of cheaper versions out there that I wouldn't say are necessarily bad. I would just say that maybe the warranty, um, and the longevity of the machine is probably not there. So I went with Lincoln because it's a trusted brand. It's been around for a really long time. And I, the welding company that I buy all my supplies from supports them very well. If there's ever an issue, they take care of it right away. So uh, to me, that meant more. Where did you learn to weld? And do you have to go to school to weld? Do you need licenses? How does that work? It depends on the type of work you're doing, uh, whether you need to be a certified welder or not. I have not jumped into that yet because I'm not doing any structural welding or anything like that. Most stuff I'm doing is uh, like intercooler piping or um, oh, just aluminum custom built things for different cars, stuff like that. So I don't really need to be certified in that. Where I learned how to do it, I went to school when I was younger and then I kind of quit using it. About, I'd say about two years ago, I was like, you know what? I really miss doing that. And so I kind of took it up and I, I had to relearn it and it took time and I still got a lot to learn. It's not, you know, it's not something you're just gonna go in and be really good at right away. It, it really takes some time. I mean, there are some people out there that are just extremely good and they've had years and years of experience. What are some other equipments that you think are necessary for welding or having a business like this? I would say you definitely need to have a good air compressor and you know, you're gonna need grinders, basic hand tools. You know, your welding helmet's a huge one. A nice fabrication table, something that you can lay stuff out on. It's nice to have something like that. Something to lift heavy objects is nice. Uh, we have an I-beam in the barn that we can use. Also, you can get away with a cherry picker, something like that. Just have something to lift heavy stuff because if you're gonna get into welding, chances are you're gonna get into heavy things. So can you tell us a little bit about the CNC? Yeah, the CNC plasma table is nothing more than just a, the CNC table itself is running wherever you tell it to. So 
when you create an image, you move that into a CAD program and it gives it what they call as a G code. The computer will like put out a G code and it's really long and it's just a bunch of numbers, really, really tough to understand. But the computer knows how, to, or the machine knows how to recognize that. The computer will tell it the pattern, the code, where to go, and then it will tell it when to fire the plasma tape or the plasma cutter itself, which will essentially cut out what you ask it to cut out. And how much does something like this cost? There are a lot of versions out there. Now the there's like a Langmar that they make that's pretty plug and play. Those are about, you can get like a two foot by four foot for about $4,000 to start. You still need to get a plasma cutter and you're still gonna need just miscellaneous things. So I would say you could start out with a really small table for about four to five thousand dollars to get started. This table here is a it's a four by eight. It's actually a little bit bigger than that, but it'll accept a four by eight sheet of steel. So this table new is about ten thousand. I purchased this one used. Like I said before, don't be afraid to buy used equipment. It's it's okay. It's uh, most of the time it just has been neglected a little bit. You put a little time in it and you're gonna have a really great running machine. It took me about a month to get this thing really just dialed in to be able to cut. Now I'm focusing on just driving for that work. Is there any other materials that you can cut with this machine? So you can cut steel and aluminum with this machine. I know there are different attachments for different machines that you can do like scribing, different things like that but I think majority of these are just made for steel and aluminum. So can you tell us what this project is that you made? Yeah, so this is called a smudge pot. This is uh, something that a friend showed me. What this does is you, you CNC plasma cut all the parts out. Um, you gotta bend a few and then you weld it all together. This is a tank down here and uh, what it holds and what it burns is diesel fuel, used motor oil, any kind of oil it will burn and it just generates a ton of heat. I mean, it's all contained here. You know, all the fire stays up high. So I would say that it's, it's a very efficient way to heat outdoors, your fire pit, something like that. It's, it's super efficient. You can close down the fire if you need to. There's just kind of a little trap door there. That'll kind of regulate it down. It's just a really neat kind of cool fire pit. And these, uh, these chimneys, these can be designed however you want them. Being a Michigan football fan, that's, that's what I did to start with, but you can put your name, your company logo, you can put anything you want can be cut out of this. And they are interchangeable too. So if, uh, if you bought one and later on this got worn out or you wanted to change the design, put something else, uh, we could just cut another chimney and you could bolt it right back on your base. And how much would something like this cost? So this would retail probably about 550. Just really depends on how intricate the chimney gets, how many little cuts and stuff are in there. That's, that's really where the time comes in to design it. But usually they all average about 550. Phase uh, machine. So you have to do a phase converter unless you have three phase. But, and then you'll see this start up, it's kind of slow. But once that gets rolling, this is a pretty cool machine so like instead of sitting at the drill press and drilling out holes you can set this right here you can see it just punches the hole and there are different size dies for that so we can do up to a 5 8 hole and a half inch piece of steel so you can do some really thick steel as well over there it'll cut angle iron, flat stock, it'll shear this off. So it just cuts it that quick. So when you're, uh, when you're doing fabrication, time is just your essence. Like you need that time. So to be able to hurry up and just chop this with ease. I mean, it'll just sit there and cut it over and over and over, so. This is a really, really cool old piece of equipment. How old is it? I don't honestly know. I, I gotta say it was probably made in the 60s, but you talk about expenses and you talk about that stuff, right? So you find this on Marketplace and you're like, all right, it's 800 bucks. It's really cool. Like I need this, it's gonna be great. And then you're like, oh, it's three phase. So now I need a phase converter. Well, phase converter, those are anywhere from 500 to $1,000. Then you gotta have an electrician come and wire it all up for you. So 
just to get this up and running after I bought it was another thousand dollars. So it's uh, just be careful with the equipment that you're buying. Make sure you have the electricity to power it. You have the means to lift it and move it and operate it. You said that one sheet of steel is about $350. How many projects can you get out of that? So it depends on your thickness of the steel. 350 would be quite a bit thicker steel. Most signs like this, this is 16 gauge. So I can buy a sheet of this 16 gauge for about, I wanna say 150 bucks. And I could probably get 20 of those signs out of it just guessing. That's where your money comes in as the repetitive over and over and over. Once you find something that sells, the one avenue I think we're gonna try next is like football signs for local kids that you can do their name and their number in and have their logo. And I think that that would be a really cool seller. So you gotta have a little bit of capital, I guess, to buy some material and be able to cut stuff out and put it up in hopes to sell because it really just takes that one thing to really click that everybody wants and then you know it'll take off but i'd save a lot of scraps you know when there's a project left over save that scrap and really just try stuff you know it doesn't hurt to cut a little thing out and post it up for sale and maybe you get a hit on it maybe you don't and if you don't you only have a couple dollars in it it's not not the end of the world what are three tips of advice for other entrepreneurs i would say really sit down number one do your homework do your homework on the people People that are already doing what you're doing you know they you know somebody that's been in business for a long time they know what they're doing find out what they're charging find out how they're structured how they're doing things if you're kind of going into an avenue that nobody's really doing so you can still do that research find out your cost but really pay attention to your cost and what you know what it's gonna cost to operate every single month beyond that have a goal set inside you know, it, it's going to seem really unachievable at first. It, it really is. But it's think of it as a ladder. I mean, if you you just got to climb one step at a time, you're never going to make it to the top just overnight. It's, it's just not going to happen. It's a lot of nights of grinding, working till nine, 10 o'clock at night. But you have to put in that grind to really appreciate it in the end. I guess the other thing I would say with businesses is just be careful with debt in the beginning. It's really easy to go get a brand new truck that you think you need for the business to go buy that brand new piece of equipment you know that's all well and good but when that payment comes every month and if you are a little slow that money's got to come from somewhere so just kind of you know i i would say try to build your equipment and your vehicles and your stuff as you grow it's okay to start with a used truck it's okay to start with used equipment um, nobody's going to look down on you and and most people in this kind of industry and in any trades i would say they're going to respect that you're out there trying and you're out there hustling and you're you know you're working every day that's what they want to see the flashy trucks the flashy equipment it's nice but it in the end it's not really going to do a lot for you